Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to our fellow classmates and our beloved lecturer Dr. Aida Maria Binti Ismail. My name is Nada Binti Mama Nizam and my groupmates are Aina Binti Mama Yasser, Karisa Shafika Binti Rozwan, Nur Iza Binti Nur Azlan, Nur Amira Akila Binti Azmi and Nur Afza Ifa Binti Mama Paisal. Today, we will be presenting about case 26, which is Restoring Trust in Corporate Governance, the case of Hongwei Holdings Perhai. I hope each and every one of you will lend us your ears and enjoy this simple yet insightful presentation. I'm sure you guys already know in depth about the company. However, I would like to freshen up your mind and get a little bit into the company's background before we dive right into the question. Hongwei Holdings Perhai is established in 1993 and they engage in the footwear production specializing in producing shoe soles. They aim to make high quality and comfortable footwear but um, at the same time still selling those shoes at an affordable price. They started off by producing rubber shoe soles and then got into thermoplastic rubber shoe soles and then slowly but surely progressed into AVA Model 1 shoe soles and AVA Model 2 shoe soles. Hongwei Holdings Perhat mission is to be a leading name in the footwear industry. Now that you guys are freshened up about the company's background, I will pass it on to my groupmate to continue this presentation. Moving on, there is a difference between good governance and bad governance. Good governance is where there is transparency of information provided, where all the relevant information that might satisfy the interests of stakeholders such as regulators, uh, shareholders and public will be disclosed in the financial statement. Also, precise and accurate information about the company's financial, operational and other aspects. However, a bad governance is where there is lack of transparency and accountability where there is no full disclosure about the information of the company in the financial statement. Next, in the case of dishonesty and corruption detected are not being informed to the stakeholders in the financial statement and the company hide from them. Lastly, there is arbitrary policy making where the decisions made are not based on facts but instead it is made based on opinions of majority that might be not complying with the rules and regulations. Next, we will dive right into the questions and question number one requires us to identify and explain about the issues and weaknesses regarding the company's uh, corporate governance. The first and obvious uh, issue or weakness that we can see here is the delay in submission of the December 2015 annual report. This is because the auditors have additional tasks to be done because they needed to investigate the company's incurred expenditure and bank balances. Knowing their inability to submit the report on time, they have notified Bursa Securities Malaysia and said that they will submit the report two months after the supposed date. However, even after two months, the company still failed to submit the annual report. This shows lack of planning in the company and due to their actions, the company's pressure has dropped significantly. The second issue that we will look at is regarding their subsidiaries and auditors. The auditors were having a hard time doing their work because the subsidiaries were refusing to give full cooperation. Due to their failure to work together, the ownership and recoverable amount were unable to be calculated. In another situation, the audit committee failed to collect sufficient evidence to prove ownership of inventories for one of their subsidiaries. This again has caused the audit report to be incomplete. The next issue problem arises is from internal control. Based on the Company Act 2016, Section 246, Subsection 1, Subsection B, all transactions are properly authorised and all transactions are recorded as necessary to enable the preparation of companies through and fair view of the financial statements of the company. So, the internal problem caused the company to have an inability to obtain sufficient assurance that there were no material weaknesses in the system of internal accounting controls or that there were no risks in the financial statements may be materially misstated as a result of fraud. The internal problem is regarding uh, the legal claims against Jinjiang Shoes Limited, 
the auditor was unable to provide the information um, needed and comprehensive legal advice and the auditor was also unable to assess the completeness of the legal cases extending liabilities including the potential contingent liabilities. Besides, the remaining directors, uh, Gary Menon and Jasmine Kaur, were fined 1,600,000 each for causing Huawei to commit financial reporting violations and allowed the, hol the holding company to commit corporate governance violations, foreign listing requirement breaches, disclosure breaches and non-compliance with Bur Bursa Malaysia Securities Directives. They also failed to convey with either the regulator or the new board in Malaysia about uh, Bursa's enforcement action fines imposed on them. Lastly, since the auditors were unable to contact with the management team of the subsidiaries, they were, they were unable to determine whether the going concern assumption is appropriate. So the last issue is the CEO still do not know how to build the trust and understanding with their shareholders and stakeholders. So according to the Malaysian Code of Corporate Governance, the board should encourage effective and timely communication and ongoing engagement with its stakeholders. So the procedures should have included how the organization considers feedback from its stakeholders when making business decision to understand the expectation of stakeholders and develop the business strategies. However, in this case, all decisions and works are made solely by the chairman, Gary Menon and CEO Jasmine Kaur without any participation of subsidiaries team in any decision making activities. Thank you. We will now answer the second question which is to suggest some strategies on how to improve corporate governance in the company. The first strategy is improve governance of subsidiaries. First, formation of separate board for subsidiaries. For the board of the subsidiary company, there should be a mixture of both the um, members from the parent company and members from the subsidiary company to instill a sense of balance of the two competing interests. The parent company will be more focused in uh, maintaining the executive control over the subsidiary company strategy direction while the subsidiary would not want to only act in accordance of the general will of the parent company. But if they are uncomfortable, the member can also become a non-executive member and a common member. Second is Foster a mutually beneficial parent-subsidiary relationship. They need to reach an understanding of each other's point of views. In which, uh, for example, how does the other party perceive the parent-subsidiary uh, matrix? This also assists in defining and redefining the subsidiary role of the overall group as a whole so that the subsidiary company does not deviate from the parent company's business strategy. The subsidiary role is ever-changing and it was, must also take note of the a parent subsidiary relationship, the subsidiary's initiative and good judgment, as well as the parent company recognizing the subsidiary capability to contribute. The third is ensure consistent quality subsidiary information with entity management technology. To meet the many needs of parent and the subsidiary companies, there is a need for reliable and accurate information which can be obtained from the entity management technology that helps in coordinating the information such as tracking company life cycles, the appointments of directors and officers, the ownership, registration requirements and regulatory measures. It also helps in facilitating all the information disregarding the time barriers, language barriers and different departments. It is also useful in centralized data source for entity the information, compliance, obligation management, and collaboration across the organization. Secondly is the appointment of competent board members. Nominating committees should take adequate amount of time to appoint board members who are skilled and having ample shoe industry knowledge to assist in board of director of Hongri Holdings Berhad. Not all directors have the same skill. That is why we need to instill the balance among the board, which is, which is done by uh, having those who are having a knowledge on Hongri Holdings Berhad, having helpful expertise and specialty, as well as uh, offer fresh and flexibility perspective uh, that will ensure the cooperation can sustain in competitive market in future. Other than that, nominating committee should consider additional qualities such as behavioral competencies and interpersonal skills. 
because this quality will have impact on interaction or relationship around the boardroom table between a board and management and between director and key stakeholder. This interaction will affect the overall board performance as the board member with problem behavior can cause chaos during the discussion. Meanwhile, those with the terrible interpersonal skills may not be able to effectively communicate their ideas in the discussion or cause miscommunication. So, Tally is about the monitoring the performance of organizations. Monitoring is an important responsibility of board of director as it is include maintaining legal compliance and ensuring the corporate decisions are in line with the organization strategy and the expectation of honest. This means board of director of Hanway Holdings Berhad need to balance the conformance which involves two things. First is compliant with legislation, regulation and code of ethics and secondly is combining with performance aspect of board work. These two things can be done by formulating the strategy and making the policy. Other than that, Board of Director of Honey Holdings Berhad should agree on framework for the report they monitor as a group to guarantee that all items should be reported. This will help monitoring processes as every people in organization fulfill their responsibility and operates their own abilities to the best of organization. Besides that, monitoring also involves performance reporting, which the attention should be focused on Honeywell Holdings Berhad. Every board of directors in the company should be responsible to make sure that every report is presented in a relevant time frame instead of ignoring or leaving the organization without any reports. This is because it will act as the benchmark for the performance based on every aspect of of information. The fourth strategy is solve the fine CEO and board relationship. A strong relationship between these two parties can help to enhance and build corporate governance. A good relationship between these two is also important for an organization as these two are the main entities in the management. The relationship interrelates as the CEO performs the ideas from the board and the board review and also take any action if changes are needed. In Hongwei, Gary Manor as the chairman and Jasmine as the CEO seem to have a bad relationship as Gary put the pressure on to Jasmine which is not supposed to happen. Instead, Gary should discuss with Jasmine in a good and effective communication so that they can reach a compromise on how to solve the Homeways problem and to avoid the uh, worst case scenario. Other than that, a board and the CEO should have a good relationship so that they can set the tone in the company on how to operate. As the CEO, Jasmine is able to consolidate her position and also avoid the stress of being top at the firm. For Gary, he should discuss the homeways problem with Jasmine and also about the business performance. He should offer advice and be a consultant so that they can complement each other's knowledge and improve the corporate governance. Now I will be answering question three. Based on our observation, Hongwei Holding Berhad is not an attractive business in the industry. There are few reasons why. First, involved in court case. There are legal dispute against Jinjiang Shoe Materials, which is one of Hongwei's subsidiaries. It involved litigation cases of the company's operation in China, which included 10 lawsuits. This situation led to their reputation tarnish as other entities will look down on Hongwei's management. Besides that, the CEO and director of Hongwei participate in many illegal activities, such as committing reporting breaches, disclosure breaches, and others. This will reduce the public confidence toward Hongwei's businesses in the future. It also leads to a high cost of recovering as public relations need to invest a lot of money to overcome the problem. Thus, it reduces the profit. Second, failure in corporate governance causing employee dissatisfaction. There is contributory negligence when the audit report was delayed because the management team of the subsidiary did not give commitment to the auditors to solve the problem phase. This situation will make the auditor perform a lower quality audit work and reduce the amount of audit work. Therefore, the ownership and recoverable amount of the subsidiary could not be determined which lead to incomplete audit work. Incomplete audit work also happened because auditors were unable to obtain appropriate evidence from its subsidiaries to know whether they still had the ownership 
over the inventories or not. Third, failure to attract investors due to bad financial position in the annual report. The company has a low liquidity and low solvency. From 2013, Huawei had been making losses till the financial year end 2016. It was revealed the group's only current asset is cash, which is lower by 99.99%. It shows a very drastic decrease in liquidity. Therefore, there is no guarantee for the investors to receive any return in the short run. Furthermore, the share price has been failing every year due to the delay in submitting the annual report. The dropping share price also made it unattractive to the investors and shareholders. It also has a negative shareholders' equity, negative EPS and ROI. This is evidence that the company is unable to give return to the investors. It is risky to expect any potential growth in the earnings in the close future. Besides that, attracting potential debentures might also be difficult. This is due to the company itself not having any proof of creditworthiness. Lastly, unable to take advantages of business opportunities in the footwear industry due to economic condition. Huawei do not have the capital or fund to produce new and stylish product. In the year 2016, the gross profit has a drop of 98.95% from 2015, which shows how unappealing their products are to the customers. Their production cost also is very high with the increasing cost of raw material. To cater to the ever-changing fashion trend, they need to research customer tastes and develop or enhance product to meet those tastes. This is to ensure the products can achieve a high customer satisfaction. Therefore, the company needs to incur lots of costs to gain any sufficient revenue. In conclusion, the position of Hongwei Holding Berhad in the industry in terms of business attractiveness is quite bad. We proceed to the fourth question, which is how would you perceive Hongwei Holding Berhad's internal control? The first issue, there is lack of standard operating procedure where in this case, there is no guidelines to ensure continuous communications among employees. These guidelines is vital in the company as to ensure that all the business activities are being run smoothly and efficiently. The example of lack of standard operating procedure found in this case study is where the staff of Hongwei Holding resigned without prior notice. This indicates that the company has no specific guidelines for the staff to resign ethically. The next issue is there is lack of proper documentation. They fail to document and keep proper records of the company which causes delay in their work as there is no sufficient evidence to complete the work. This can be proven by auditors could not verify whether significant events that occur after reporting period has been significantly dealt with as there is no proper records. The third issue is where the directors do not discharge their duties properly. It is the duty of a director to exercise with reasonable care, skill and diligence and even avoid conflict interests. But in this case, the remaining directors has committed breaches for causing Hongwei to commit financial reporting breaches and permitting the conglomerate to commit corporate governance breaches, foreign listing requirement breaches, disclosure breaches and even non-compliance with the Bursa Malaysia Securities Directives and led to the downturn of the business. The fourth issue is where there is ineffective internal control over financial reporting. They are incapable to ensure no material weakness in system and no risk of materially misstated in financial statement. This will cause a reduce of trust of external users towards the company that will eventually lead to the company have difficulties to acquire financial supports. The last issue is there is material uncertainty. There is a rise of issue on the company's going concern where the auditors are unable to determine whether the use of going concern assumption is applicable or not as the auditors are not able to obtain necessary information from the company's management and even management of the subsidiaries. In conclusion, they need to strengthen their corporate governance in order to operate smoothly and sustain in the market. Next, they need to address all external and internal issues in order to make improvement. And lastly, they need to identify each individual's scope of role. 
such as the rules of auditors, the rules of directors, and even the rules of employees. When they are informed about their scope of roles, only then they can operate efficiently.